How do you experience journeying in your own life? Or how do you sense trust in life? How do you experience journeying in your own life? Or how do you sense trust in life? That's actually two prompts in one. So feel free to respond to either one. Okay, if you are willing, we can begin to bring that free right moment to a close. And what I will ask you is that since this panel, we are going to speak about journeys and journeying, um, all the panelists are people who have made um, different kinds of pretty significant journeys recently. And so they'll be sharing about that and their experiences. What we will also weave in is our own journey during this panel. Um, and what I will ask you all is to share throughout the panel any echoes, any resonances, words, phrases, sentiments, sensations, feelings from what you're hearing or from what you've just written in your free write um, that we are opening with. And we'll weave this into a co-creative poem together. And I ask that you send this to me in direct message on the account that is labeled echoes, right? Is that good? Can I see some thumbs up? Yeah, does that make sense? Any clarifications? Awesome. All right, so let's take this show on the road. I'd love for all of us who are on the panel, Rose, Shruti, Camilo, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for saying yes to this adventure. I'd love for you all to just start by going around and reflecting on journeys that you have undertaken recently. And I'm curious, like sometimes my mom asks me, um, I come from a nomadic background on one of my lineages. Sometimes my mom asks me, oh, you know, are your feet beginning to burn again? You know, are you about to go on another journey? And <laughs> I find that phrase funny, but I'm curious for you all, what is it that sets your feet burning? What is it that was the call that invited you forward into the journeys that you have made? What was your yes to setting out into the world? And either one, anyone could open, anyone could start, and then we'd just pass it round. I can start. Um... For me, it has always been um, a sense of stagnation when I'm not traveling. And when I am <laughs> in one place for a long time, it feels like, oh my God, I am, I feel a lot of stagnation and I need to move. Um, and stagnation um, uh, in terms of learning, you know, in terms of relationships, in terms of even just uh, connecting with myself. And I always feel that um, so whenever I feel like, okay, it's time, you know, I am just <laughs> repeating the mundane activities of my life and I need to break out of this. I need to go learn more, meet new people. Um, and, uh, and that's when I travel, uh, and it's, it happens sometimes in a couple of weeks. Sometimes it's like after six months, sometimes it's maybe a year or two. So, yeah. Lovely. Camilo, Rose, what is your sense of what calls you forth? Greetings, everyone. You know, what called me forth on my journey that I've just returned from, from traveling East Africa, was predominantly what moved me this time was trauma. And with sitting with some traumas which I've experienced through a natural disaster, I've sat at the waters, at the ocean or the sea specifically, and asked a few questions. And a call came in me with, came into me. And the voice within me, my higher voice, my intuition said, it's time to travel beyond the borders of South Africa and to find and seek what the matriarchal lineage is, not only from my ancestry, 
but also from the animals. And talking about ancestry, for me, that was the Bushman Walk and the Bushman Trails that needed strongly to be opened up within, within Africa. And it called me to walk East Africa. Yeah. So it was pretty much ancestrally led and 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 trusting the deeper knowing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, afternoon, or night for everyone. I'm actually in my starting a journey in Mexico. Uh, a couple of days I arrived here, and um, well, I, I still have, I like, like I, I think I, 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 I will have always an, a different answer for every journey. And even when I'm not moving, actually like a, a body and I'm back home I'm I'm quite like trying to move my, my energy I think every time I wake up and uh, this body and uh, uh, the humanity and the reality around I think movement helps me and helps us we are moving beings to get understand get to understand um, what's time what's life step by step relationships so it's it's something that um yeah something that is it's an insect that i think it moves me movement i need, need some that I cannot explain it uh, more um, more punctual for this journey. It's like every single journey starts like that. Something that is not uh, necessarily happening uh, first by with like my my consciousness. It's something that just moves my energy. Mm. Mm. Thank you all so much. I'd love for us to dive a little bit deeper, just like drop one more layer into the particular journeys that you've been making. Rose, you already began to talk about this journey that you took walking the um, old sun trails and also the walking through East Africa. Um, Shruti, I know you've done this beautiful cycle yatra through Southern India and Camillo, you are uh, my hitchhiking teacher. Um, I'd love for you to reflect on journeys that you have gone on and share one or two stories of moments that have supported you to restore trust in life or trust in other humans and trust in yourself. Tell us a bit about the journey that you went on and then reflect on two or, uh, or so stories. Well, maybe I can start now. I'm going back in this circle because uh, I would like to share about how how I think when Goya and me got got here to this conversation. We were a couple of months, maybe away, maybe not either. A couple of months away, maybe just some some weeks. Yeah, in Brazil together. After the global gathering, we were all mo very moved by all the experiences we've had. And uh, uh, in fact, it was my last day in Brazil. And with Wangoi, we had time to share. Sometimes the trip the, the, doesn't make it possible to, to stay for a while with some soul or with some someone you want to to have a, a deeper connection. And uh, we had that that last day, that last time to have that. Maybe we not we were not even expecting it, but um we had the opportunity to go to we were in one one place next to the beach. 
a very beautiful beach as Mother Earth can be all over. But it was um, full of people that were like in another, uh, yeah, with another energy that we might have in that moment or what we were looking for. That's why I think energies also move us directly into what we need. We, our energy moves and tries to follow what 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 it feels. So we we got this invitation to go to another place. It was very very far away. In fact, in the map, it looked very far away, the other side of the city. We were not in the city in itself. We were like in in, in a beach outside the city, but it was like in another beach, very far away. And it was a very nice invitation because we were going to meet like um, local people from a quilombo ancestral ceremony. We had like all this planned, well, not really planned, but like a very beautiful idea of what would be the invitation. And I, I really just wanted to follow one guy and follow whatever happened. And we got really lost. We never arrived to this uh, this other place. Not even, not even close, I think. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I never, I never, even, even when, when we understood uh, that we were lost, that we were not arriving, we, were, I, I was, I was, yeah, I, I was very into, into what was happening. That I felt, I felt, I felt so confident, and I felt that this was the thing that we had to do. Uh, trusting Wangoi, trusting her cell phone, trusting everything, but. Uh, I I had I, I already knew somehow that we were not going to the place we were supposed to, supposed to, but that the way we were going it was the one that we had to, because everything was so beautiful and everything was opening so so great, as we arrived to the most beautiful place ever, not not close as I'm telling you to the place we were supposed to be. And um, we got to talk about that. We got to talk about that. That um, how 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 life shows uh, and uh, gives us some moments. In fact, I think with one guy we needed in our uh, in our short relationship as friends, we need some time to talk. Also, we didn't have that, and we had all these days to talk because we were really really lost. Then it was like how to come to go back, you know. We we were like far away from everything, no sign and stuff. And it was like there's a path there. It's gonna be fine. We let's walk. Let's look for someone in the road that might uh, like give us directions. There must be a way that uh, this this will open. And um, everything was so beautiful. It was like the perfect climate, the perfect everything. So. I was I was really into into trusting that and somehow it opened to this kind of conversation and the first experience for you try hijack and trying to <laughs> just the experience of trying to you know hijack and then walk a little bit more and walk the hill and have fun with it you know have fun with how, how however the the path is showing and it was very, very beautiful. So um, yeah, that's the experience I wanted to. And it was, for me, it was my perfect last day. Is sometime later, I took, uh, I took, I started my, 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 my road back. So thank you very much, Wango, for that also. It was very cool. Thank you so much, Camilo. And a bee greets you, there's a bee that's around me. And I'd love to pass the mic to Rosa Shruti. Would you share something from your recent journeys and tell us about that journey that you took? Okay. Um, so for me, it started with being my own leader, you know, making my decisions myself and also 
not really actually confiding in anyone really besides myself, you know, and, and meditation. And from there, I learned that, or I just, I realized that, you know, there are people around me and I should shouldn't be secluding myself you know and with secluding myself I found myself spending a, a tremendous amount of time in the forest in the mountain going to the sea going to water bodies and I realized that I I have very little trust in humans <laughs> or in other beings you know and trusting a lot in the forces and the, the the natural elements, which has been my guide. And with that understanding was like a bell, and it's like just a big gong that went off inside of me. And I was like, but I am okay, you know? But now how do I... How do I, I get to, to start feeling heart and start feeling love again for humanity and for my fellow brothers and sisters? So I went to a performance um, rehearsal for sound journeying and the next, and the evening I slept and I woke up and I just woke up with this, I need to leave now. <laughs> I packed my I packed my sleeping bag in my backpack and I packed two garments in my bag and the third garment I had on and I knew that if I that was enough for me and I put on my boots and I just started walking and all I knew was I am supposed to cross Signal Hill which is the mountain range that surrounded me at the time. I walked and I called out you know, asking for great guidance from the divine and also know, knowing that I've always trusted in great, the great source, you know. That I got picked up, I started hitchhiking and I got picked up by these Gorgos, these elders, male elders. And in the car, the driver told me, you know, I had a dream. I had a dream that my sister was going through initiation. And I was like, wow, that's quite a, a interesting dream. And he went on saying that, yes, I was supposed to take her to start this journey. And by the time he ended the dream, I was at the destination where I was to stop. And then he told me, and I just realized now it wasn't my sister, but it was you, my sister. And I, my eyes grew so large and I was, I realized that the universe always has one's back, no matter what. And the greater, the greater essence of love and life is always behind us. And to trust that, that the right you, the right people will always be on one side, no matter what. Because what you put out there is what you're also gonna attract. So for me, that was that was a very big highlight in me to also remember to trust my leadership also when it comes to others and also my inner leader as well <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> thanks should i go next I'm sorry, my uh, yeah, technology did its thing and I had to drop off. I hope it doesn't happen again. Um, so I'm just um, yeah. Um, so I re the last big journey that I did, uh, I took was a cycle journey, uh, and I cycled across so southern India, southern states of India, and um, the hope was to um, to document food stories. Um, and um, I was initially for the first two weeks, another person joined me and both of us who are absolutely not, uh, you know, <laughs> equipped to cycle, started cycling. Um, and then she had to leave for some reason. And then I continued solo. Um, and 
it was i think one of the achievements i've done uh, you know in life so far uh, to uh, cycle solo um uh, anyways uh, one of the stories that stayed with me was um, i i was uh, visiting this one toddy tapper uh, uh, family um, he's an activist who's trying to revive there's a ban on drinking toddy toddy is the alcoholic drink that's tapped from palmira tree so it's banned in the state and the and the farmer that i was meeting is you know working on reviving that uh, re removing the ban etc uh, so i had to try i had to cycle 85 kilometers that day so i started early in the morning around 5 um, and i started cycling um, and i reached the place um, his his farm um, in the night uh, you know way beyond sunset um, and um, it was, and he has built the place in a way that there's no electricity and it's just surrounded by beautiful palm, palmyra trees. And the day, I, like the night I reached, he, he was busy with something else. And I, I think because of the exhaustion that I had the whole day, I felt unwell the, that night. And I, I was, they gave me a hut to stay in. The hut had no doors. Um, it was just open. Um, and we were in, a, in an open field. Um, and there was one bathroom with just one, like a curtain. That's all. So if a wind comes, it's, you know, <laughs> it's just, you're out there open to the world. And, um, and then um, what happened the sec next day, I woke up and I was really, uh, the city person in me was like, okay, I'm going back. I'm going to go get a hotel room and this and that. And then I decided uh, against it. I said, okay, let me give it a try. Let me stay here for a day and see how it goes. And then one day changed into a week and I stayed there and it was one of the most beautiful experiences. The day, uh, the day I left, I literally was crying um, and I was so touched by their hospitality and their stories or their struggles and um, and every day like in the morning they would give me this uh, you know this glass full of fresh uh, palm uh, sap uh, you know fresh and I would drink it and um, it was just something that I still sit with how uh, my journey just shifted uh, from reluctance to not wanting to, reluctance to stay there to reluctance to leave. Um, and and I think that's that's where the trust was built, you know, something. And I, I trusted myself, firstly, to, I told myself it's okay, you know, give one day. And then I trusted them. Um, and, and, and I think both of that is also important, you know, trust in yourself and trust in the community that you're traveling, you're, you're going and staying with or you're traveling with. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's what comes to my mind right now. Thank you. Thank you all. The bee still greets us. Um, and I'd love for us to, like, we've begun to name, right? Shruti, you're naming, Rose, you're naming those places where we feel challenged, those places where maybe we feel like, oh, am I really, am I really doing this? Do I really want to do this? Um, you know, where there's doubts, where there's fears, where there's challenges. And when I was thinking about this um, invitation about restoring trust in life, um, I don't know how many of us were present yesterday in uh, Mickey Kashtan's talk. That's a phrase that I uh, borrow from Mickey, that there are certain things that challenge our trust in life, right? The dominant systems, ooh, I'm sorry, the bee is on my leg. <laughs> I do not want to get stung, okay. Um, <laughs> this is me practicing trust in life. Will the bee sting me? Please don't. I got stung for the first time a couple of months ago and it freaking hurts. Um, but what are those things that have challenged you even when you've been on a journey? And some of these are perhaps coming from our social identities and markers that we carry with us through the world, right? Whether that's being woman, being short, being tall, whether that's the color of your skin, your caste, um, the amount of money you have, and that might be a marker that's like a marker of privilege or a marker of, of this privilege. Um, what are those like places where, when you've been traveling, where there are moments while you are on a journey that these, these things came up as challenges or you felt challenged by them? And were there also moments that these different social identities and markers or um, 
privileges and disprivileges also brought beauty. Maybe this time we start at the end again. So Shruti, you will go first. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> um, for me, during the cycle, yeah, so even like I travel extensively for my work and even just my passion, like I said in the beginning, um, I can't stay in one place. I feel very stagnant, so I need to keep traveling. And uh, whenever I've traveled, especially in the last two years, one question that I keep getting asked is, um, are you traveling alone? Being a woman, are you traveling alone? Why are you not here? Um, if, why are you not here with your husband or why are you not here with your friends? Especially during the cycling journey, I was I was constantly asked, why are you traveling alone? You know, you can bring your friends along. And I'm like, my friends don't want to cycle, you know, these many kilometers they had. <laughs> It's just something I picked up, but um, the, this aspect of being a woman and traveling alone has been, a, you know, a repetitive thing uh, for me. And I won't say it was um, it was uh, challenging, but it was sometimes very putting down. So you know, as I would cycle, people would wait and look at the back. They won't look at me. They would look at the back if somebody else is coming, you know. For, you know, so they're waiting for an <laughs> for a group of people or someone else to come. Um, so yeah and another interesting thing is uh, when you know when they would see me cycling alone they would be like oh um so do you have someone back uh, at home and like yes i have a partner and they're like oh your partner is the best because he let you cycle you know solo <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, yes, he is the best, but I'm not cycling because he let me cycle. I'm cycling because that's my, you know, that's what I want to explore for myself. So these are, this is one theme that just kept uh, coming again and again. Um, and another one was also about how, no matter how much I would dress, want to, um, like in, in India, we have such, uh, you, you know, we have a lot of social hierarchies and no matter how much I would try to dress down uh, while I'm going to a village I would still be looked up like there is a hierarchy with which you know they see me um, so the, even if I'm choosing a non geared cycle even if I'm choosing you know like wearing longer dresses and this is still you know the color of the skin the way I speak um, the jewelry I wear everything uh, so they, no matter how much I'll tell them, please do not put a chair. I would love to sit on the floor like you do. Um, no, they will still put a chair and they would expect me to sit on the chair. Um, and that's something that, you know, constantly. Um, and um, and it's also like, how much do you give into it and how much you resist it? Because you're also, like, I'm also trying to challenge these um, hierarchies for myself in my life and in the larger societal uh, setting so and that has a, has been a struggle like when do I give in when do I say no put my foot down and say no I want to sit on the floor um, so that has also been um, a challenge um, but I, I I think I'll just finish by saying this uh, that even um, like oh you're a woman and you're traveling cycling alone has also been a, a, a sense of you know it has empowered me also to some extent I have felt like, oh, I'm a woman and I'm traveling alone. And, uh, you know, I have loving, I have a loving family, a loving partner and a beautiful setup um, that empowers me to do this. And, and I have like shifted that narrative for myself. And a lot of people do that also when I travel now. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to share. Yeah, I would like to go next. <laughs> hmm. So for me, as woman traveling through Africa, I got a lot of concerns, you know, from friends who found out later on that I was traveling and I'm going as the feeling is, is flowing. 
So, but because I was traveling with my mouth bow, which pretty much is as long as a spear and it looks like a spear as well. And I never covered it. People were constantly thinking I was walking around with a weapon <laughs> until I came to to Kilimanjaro and to Tanzania um, and close to the borders of Kenya where the Maasai is predominant and where they are walking with their spears, you know, um, I was a bit more accepted. Um, but before that, I had security come up to me and question what I was holding in my hand and why am I keeping it? And then I had to introduce them to the Bushman uh, mouth bow. And then I ended up playing a bit of the mouth bow for them, which is one of the very primordial sounds and one of the first sounds other than breath. Um, that's that's coming to existence and it just shifted the entire mindset you know because it softened them up a little bit because you know they or oh, they had this authoritative um authoritative figure that they had to uphold but other than that, for me, the language was uh, was a big thing. So I constantly had to look out for people that I felt was that I could was approachable in the crowd um, and ask if they could speak English and um, and ask them to translate for me. And that helped in certain instances, but there was constant a cu a, a very curi curious nature of people of why am I a woman traveling alone you know is everything okay with me um, is something the matter and you know I had to explain to them that I am I'm I'm walking and I'm traveling so that I can get to know the villages get to know who the what cultures is around me um, besides in South Africa and I'm also seeking to know a lot more about where my ancestry comes from. And within that, also a lot of them learned that, um, not learned, but started gaining interest in their own ancestral lineage, because a lot of them were also conflicted between Western society and also Eastern society and, and that push and that pull between the two. Um, yeah, so, then it was also, um, am I, you know, do I have family? Do they know where I'm coming, where, where I am? Do I have children? Can I marry you? <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of that. And um, at the end, I also learned that and started to believe, actually, that also helped me start believing and trusting that there are so many out there that is, loving kind nurturing that there is still i i can still have hope in humanity you know um and also through the environment the natural environment as well that's thriving where i come from an environment where the natural environment trees and just natural indigenous vegetation is not thriving so for me that assisted me a lot through this yeah <laughs> Hmm. Thank you, thank you, Camillo. Challenges. <clears throat> well, um, I was uh, I was thinking about. Well, it was for me not not a challenge as a solution always to just go and get a journey, get into the journey it was always like i didn't know what to how to how to live or study or what to do as a job or i was having a problem and i somehow took the the road somehow to that decision to go so it was always more than that, and maybe, maybe my context and also my my it, it helped me so much to to understand that as a as a as a possibility. But obviously, we I think any any person traveling knows that um, there's as as you named Wangoi, lots of 
like factual um, changes and one that it's like um i i am still stuck in that challenge we are all stuck in that challenge our borders no like that nation concepts that make us build walls and uh, paper works and um and that makes also think about makes me think about my borders no my my territory my body as how I, I i i also it's a challenge always to rebuild myself to show me as whatever border wants me to be part you know being colombian um well it, so maybe maybe some understand, but being Colombian or Latin American need, needing a visa, being from the South Africa, it's, uh, um, sometimes it's so difficult to not just to arrive to get whatever paperwork we need and try to go through that border. Also, what it's it comes from having to show you like what 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 it's it's always like uh, believing also in 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 showing them so it's always a challenge to 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 really yeah rebuild myself and to show me show myself so it's a, a constant um uh, questioning of how i am who i am why i'm doing this why I'm crossing this border if they don't want me to to cross it, but I'm um, trusting that there's so much humanity to 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 get to uh, to know and arrive to that there's some something in this that it's telling me and I, and also redefine borders, my borders, other borders, their borders. You know, uh, I, I I used to live in Ecuador for eight years, but the first two years I didn't have the papers, the paperwork. And uh, and also on the last year I lived there, there was the pandemic and it was the border was closed. And uh, to understand how the border also, yeah, it's an imaginary model. Always, if you don't have a wall there, and I was also very, yeah, it was it, it was easy to cross from Colombia to Ecuador, and it's still very easy because what I found out when I it was closed or when I didn't have papers is that the main roads, the main entrance, um, was just crossed by <laughs> yeah some thousand people, but a day, but it was just a little percent. There was tons, tons of entrances, tons of ways through. I remember. I was I was just needing that to cross it without having the possibility in pandemic, but I needed to go to the other side. And uh, how it opened so easy and and uh, talk with people and everyone was like, yeah, the like, border is so much. I mean, there's life and there's relationships all between the people that needed it. families to go back and forth, people working. So um, also understand how it 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 it, it can break it. Uh, it was it, it was a challenge for myself how to break that border for me, like not to feeling I'm an illegal human, you know, so and I doing something illegal because I step and walk through other uh, through other territories that have another name or something because you cross the river, but. So yes, borders are very challenging, but um, are also, um, yeah, ways of learning about myself and how I show it, I show that 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 border of myself. How 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 can I be also honest to myself? Something like. That. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'd love at this point to open up to the whole group to ask any questions. I think we might have time for one, two or three questions, depending on the length. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask, please raise your electronic hand um, and keep it short and sweet. Go to the heart of it, if you would.
Oh, okay, awesome. Thank you, Paolo. I always love more time. <laughs> And while we are, um, yes, to all the panelists. Okay, yes, I'll read it for you if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can also unmute and ask. Let's hear your voice. This time it is working. Can you hear me? Yep. Ah, very good. I've been struggling with getting the <laughs> microphone to work all day. All right. Um, it's good to share my voice as well. I have one question for all the panelists. What would be, what is one travel that you've always wanted to do? It's like your dream trip that you've always wanted to take and what makes it so special? Okay, a dream trip you've wanted to take and why? <laughs> what makes it so special? I can go first. Um, I've always wanted to go to Ethiopia because um, as far as I understand, that's where, you know, that's the place where agriculture was like, we can trace back um, a lot of our agriculture roots there. That's where, uh, you know, a lot of traditional grains that have, you know, spread across the world come from. And I feel like I want to go there and I want to really see where, like the origin of uh, of the food world. And it's it's something that I've, I've been dreaming of. I keep, <laughs> every year I'm like, next year I'm going to Ethiopia, <laughs> but it's, it's not time yet, but I'm sure there will come a day when I'll do that. Hmm. To me, it was what is still to reach Egypt, um, to go and sit in the Saharan desert and to go and sit with the, the priests and the priestess and the nomads of the Saharan desert. But I am still first going to reach the Namibian desert to sit there first a little in the canyons before I get to that. So kind of pre- planning it so that I can be prepared for the, the conditions of the sand and the sun. Yeah. No, yes. Well, lots of trips like I would love to go to Africa, for example, even though I went to Egypt. I, uh, I couldn't go to Africa because of the visa borders for the global gathering in South Africa, but yeah, like lots of trips, but I was thinking about that. I, I want to to travel. Um, I, I want to make a, like a long trip walking. Like I've learned about some people. Um, yeah, like also in bicycle, it will be beautiful, but also like going around um like um uh, yeah like going with it, it, it it's human rhythm you know like how how my my heart and how my my yeah my body starts like feeling the mountain for example when i go walking to the mountain or when I, even in the city when i walk through the city and like how do you understand uh the place differently. I would love to just like say um, I want to walk. I, I I've met a couple of people traveling, just just walking every single day, and doing kilometers, doing lots of like, and for a long time, like years, doing that. And I would love to do that one day, just to start walking, and don't need too much because if you if you walk. When you go maybe to a mountain and you are very prepared and stuff like that, well, you need like a big backpack. But if you are going to walk for kilometers, for days, for years, maybe, like to go very uh, uh, light, you know, I, I want to like walk and be light and just like 
Yeah, I, I would love to do that. Walking, like a walk travel, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Mm, awesome. I will also just say that Rose has been walking for some of her journey in Southern Africa. Um, so you have already inspiration <laughs> and maybe a comrade to go walking with. Um, any other questions for our lovely, beautiful panelists? Yes, Todd. Hi, thank you so much for sharing your stories. My question is, uh, as travelers, how do you define home? And how do you know that you belong somewhere? Like, what's this sense of belonging when you go to a new place? What does it feel like? Thank you. <laughs> Greetings, Todd. For me, home is my body, you know, and it's also mind over matter. So, and I find a sense of belonging in nature. So with just sitting against the tree, um, sitting on the soil, I find that that is comforting to me. And also fragrance. It's the same like for me, uh, I've ad adapted with, you know, when you listen to a certain song, it kind of has this memor memor memorable impact on you and it leaves some kind of imprint on you. But for me, I work with scent. So I always make, so I'm always making sure that I have a certain fragrance with me that assists me with feeling comfortable and feeling at home as well, wherever I am. Um, I find it very difficult to, <laughs> this is a very difficult question to answer, to be honest, because for most of my uh, growing up years, I felt very up, uprooted from my roots and I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. Um, and it was for the first time, I think, uh, when I started working, I worked uh, with indigenous communities. I would go to uh, these uh, villages in remote forests and live. Um, and that's when, for the first time, I felt belonging, uh, you know, and I don't know what made me. It was just, it was such a non-judgmental space uh, and a relationship that we shared uh, that I felt like I was, I belonged, you know. And and these villages were, uh, you know, no electricity, uh, no road connection, just nestled in the midst of a forest and mountains. And I think nature, like what um, Rose said, it was nature that also I felt so at home, you know, at peace with uh, nature, um, nature that's not uh, disturbed um, and uh, communities that's not disturbed. Um, so so even now when I travel and I travel uh, to a place which is uh, remote like that, uh, I feel very at home. Um, after so many years of traveling, now when I travel, I do feel like coming back to home. And for me, my home is my my love, my lover. And I that's that feels, that's my home. So whenever I say, oh, I miss home, it's just that one person. And wherever he is, I, I feel at home, you know? So we, I often say that if we travel and even if we're traveling to, I don't know, Antarctica together, uh, Antarctica is home because he's there. So, yeah. Well, for me, I think I, I think I always wanted to to go away. I had to say that I wanted to go away and like I I felt like for so many years I haven't have a like a home. In fact, I don't have still one place that I can say it's just my home. It's like I have a birth house where my mother lives and I was born there and I it's my my the place where I go normally when I'm back in Bogota the place that like the starting point of every single trip I have another house in a little town 
uh, not not a house it's a room that i rent in another little town because nature for me was very important for me in my trips when i understood i was going back to colombia as a starting point i, I didn't want to stay in the city but still like uh, i feel like i'm looking for my home even though I, I I resonate lots with Rosella about my body as at home and I was thinking about in here in Mexico in my friend's house and, and I feel like uh, being with them a hug with them eating with them is a home some, some somehow I was also thinking uh, remembering that um I I I used uh, I I lived for long outside Colombia and now that I'm back, I I I've, I've been feeling part of and and I'm very I'm very comfortable into my body in Colombia, even in the city that I don't like, um, and that happened because of the trips that I did, like going all over. I found out the first time, for example, I heard the ancient language of Muiscas, that it's the people that uh, lived in the in, in the place where now the big city is now that we, we lost the language. The first time that I heard the language was outside Colombia in a song. Someone was singing that and I felt like, oh, oh that's so touching. What what language is that? That's Muisca. And they say, What? How is that Muisca? I've never heard Muisca in my life. And I heard it far away from I heard it in Ecuador. And then um yeah, like uh, I think I, I've been I've been understanding in this case, whatever it's uh, it's my Colombianity or my through the trip traveling always and um that ma that makes me like feel i have i have i have also a home waiting for me and that my home is always there you know in that point geographical point that if if this energy for me to to start working that they also gives me a language gives me a yeah a, a form in this for my in this territory body that I am, but um, that also matches with all all what I've, I've been finding in humanity all over. Like it's love, you know, uh, companionship, familiarity. So yeah, I think I think that that's happening to me. That I'm finding little by little where is my home back in my territory, even though I'm not sure where is it still like in form, you know. But then. Uh, and yeah, like giving me also a form into my, into my, my personal, um, in this territory, or the, like my home, like understanding this is also the home of it. Yeah. Wangoi, we want to hear you also. Yes. <laughs> I will answer both questions at the same time. So um, a journey that I would like to make um is in in our kind of colonial history as a country now known as Kenya there is this tale about it's not a tale it's actually happened um a woman who was resisting um the imposition of British colonialism at the coast from the Mijikanda community got imprisoned by the British and was um imprisoned like she was at the coast by the ocean and they imprisoned her at a lake like across what became the country, like completely across the country. And one day she and a collaborator broke out of prison and walked all the way back home. You know, no maps, no whatever, no whatever. They somehow managed to make this journey back home. And it's a journey that I've wanted to make as a pilgrimage for a while. Um, and in that community, there's this, practice of these of these pots that you tend ancestral pots that you tend and there's something about that journey that just makes me wonder like was it the sound of the pots that was calling her was it the sound of the ocean that guided their steps um for them to make this walking journey over weeks 
um, and make it back home um, against all odds. It's like a, a freedom pilgrimage. And I would love to make that um, journey at some point. And on this question of like sense of home, I am, you know, reflecting on moments that I've been traveling and there's a distinct sense of like well-being and feeling like really fully myself that comes when I'm in movement. And sometimes that comes when I'm in movement when I'm dancing, but it also comes when I'm in movement when I'm traveling. And once it checks in, it's like the sense of, okay, it's all right, like all things are well, regardless of like maybe all things might not be well. Um, one of my hosts on, on this recent trip I've been on said uh, this phrase, which I love in Portuguese, to deserve to nada resolvido. Like everything is great and nothing is resolved. <laughs> I, I know sometimes it's like maybe all, everything in your life, nothing is resolved, but like you're like, but it's great. <laughs> um, and for me, like I'm sensing also like Homer's body, Homer's that sense of like, okay, it's okay here. And I'm really feeling myself and my heart on the road feels at home. I also do want to name, like sometimes I find that when you are traveling, the people who open doors to you, sometimes they're like super welcoming to strangers. And I'm like, y'all are trusting somebody who just rocks up on your doorstep. You don't know me. But somehow that for me has been super restorative of trust um, to show up in a random country, not random country, but like, you know, to show up somewhere that I've never been before. And the people just like completely take you in they feed you, they care about you, they, you know, they're asking, how are you? For me, one of the most beautiful questions I get asked is, um, are you hungry? That for me is like an encapsulation of love um, in a question. Um, and so I think the other things that I would say about like a sense of home while traveling is, for me, when I say yes, when I actually give myself over to the journey and wherever that journey is, whether it's just me leaving my house to go, you know, three hours away or one hour away to go give a class. When I say, when I give a yes, then I'm really feeling myself. I'm, I'm fully in myself and I'm, I've given myself over to whatever that journey is, whatever that moment is in life. And then I can have a sense of home. I will also give a shout out to beauty. Somehow that was just wanting to be named, like how beauty also supports me when I'm in movement to feel like myself, like, the ones who know me, who've been with me on trips, <laughs> know that I'm always rocking it. <laughs> Wherever we are, I'm always dancing. So for me, there's something also about like, when I adorn the being that I am, and I think this also comes from my pastoral roots, when I adorn the being that I am, and I say yes to the place that I'm in, and to the whatever is happening, even if it's, nothing is resolved, everything is okay, and I can sense myself fully. Okay, and then we'll have one more question by Aya, and then I'll do a closing question, and then we'll listen to our collective poem. Thank you so much for that beautiful answer, and thank you so much to all of you uh, for sharing your stories. Uh, my question to you would be, if you were to tell a young person right now who may be feeling hesitant um, about journeying the voice of parents, the voice of society, uh, what lessons or advice would you give to this young person? Thank you. I am, um, well, I had to do that for, for a couple of, times or lots of times because um one of uh, I was very lucky to to have as a job uh, being a companion for young people of a, a alternative network of learnings so um I was with in fact that was the plan with some young people always like going into a trip it was so 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 such a such a project always that it makes us um be so so creative and um yeah like have a uh, lots of fun going back and forth with some young people from um i don't know 
people from the bee, young people studying in the beach and being fisher, fisher from fisher, fishermen, yeah, families to go to the jungle and meet the people in the jungle, the, the young people from the jungle and the and get in love and it's very beautiful to be a companion with but there's always uh, there's always yes like as you, you were asking um lots of um challenges and fears and i think um i i i, I always feel about uh, like with our senses looking for the indicators the proper indicators i i, I always i always uh, yeah like it's not an advice it's just a way i think i i, I manage to organize when I, I i have when whenever you're trying to materialize that trip and uh, I feel when there's too much blocking or something, even though, for example, borders and visas are blocks, are like, yes, and, and, and you have to struggle with them. And I, I feel there's also some, some block, some, some challenges that have to be uh, with lots of efforts, uh, fight, you know. But, um, but when normally when indicators around you were, where the, 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 even nature is showing to you uh, that uh, that's that's something that you might have to do uh, when things start like happening also when something starts like um, yeah like um, I, I don't know if that happens to you when um, you want to go to any place and you start hearing about that place all over or you meet someone from that place or yeah, that's like indicator, like something that it's 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 meant to somehow. Maybe if we believe in destiny or something like that. But whenever whenever you want, you you have that will of going. To look for indicators. Is is this is this right? I think nature. I think all all the context uh, somehow helps or to 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 solve those 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 questions. Yeah, and, and also embrace the fear, you know, like embrace the fear, embrace the all those um, not comfortable feelings that somehow we, we have. That's part of it. That's the process. Like, it's not easy, obviously, but um, embrace those also, hug them. Because uh, I always have, for example, I'm very scared all, always of every single step when I heading into a trip but it's not like a scary like, <gasps> like it's like emotions and stuff so when i embrace them i can traduce them into some 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 way yep rose shruti do you want to add something to that or yeah i'd like to add to I'd really like to add to that. Um, for me, at first, it depends if you're going solo traveling. If you're going solo traveling, to be aware is the best thing to, to be aware of, is raising your awareness. I mean, breath can help with that. It's constant. It's everywhere you go. It's free. So, and then also diet, you know, traveling to different places. How are you going to eat? Are you eating street food? Are you going to do, are you doing a fancy trip? Are you going to restaurants, you know? So if you're doing street food, make sure that you check out what's happening before you purchase anything. Um, I mean, there's lots of vaccinations that one can take, but if you are anti-vaccinate vaccinator, make certain also that you have the necessary paperwork for that, especially with borders, because it's really challenging. I know in Africa it's challenging um, if you don't have the necessary paperwork and crossing borders. If you're crossing borders as well, know where you're going to on the other side. Like for me, what I can advise also, I mean, it's always good to also connect with other travelers on your journey if you're solo, just to also find the ins and outs, especially to where you are going if you're not going on, if, you, if you're attending a solo journey without technology, yeah. 
and also to know your what what the insects and what are what are the animals there that could necessarily cause harm to you you know um being medically equipped even if it's just cannabis oil make sure that you have a first aid something in your bag that <clears throat> can assist you at any time um and then also yeah fear fear is a big thing for me it came up a lot um and once one actually mentally start conquering that first or second fear it's almost like you're starting to shatter past holograms and illusions within your mind especially if you haven't got anyone you're speaking with journaling is also extremely vital um so yeah i would say always make certain paperwork you have your 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 holistic medical kit with you and that you know where you're going you know always make certain also that you at least know where the closest hospital is and also connect with some people that is of a certain position yeah within the country within the village hmm. thank you i'll just That's add great. one thing one is just trust your instincts. If your gut says no, maybe it's saying something, it's saying no for a certain reason. That's something that's worked for me. Uh, be open to pushing yourself a little bit, but if it still says no, then yeah, you know, just trust it. Um, and another one is just be open to surprises because uh, yeah, be just be just open your heart to surprises because travel can surprise you in ways that you like you know you've not even imagined uh, not in a good way bad ways also so just be open to surprises so yeah those are all awesome i think i'll add one that i learned from camillo to check and double check you know your details and the places you're going and so on um, another I learned from someone else, write out the contacts of the people who are going to meet you and also people that you're coming from and have that physically with you. Do not just rely on your cell phone. Um, I would add like have some people on standby, especially if you're going to make like within your journey, you're going to make a particular shorter, maybe more intense journey. Like at one point I did a pilgrimage up a mountain and I was like, okay, I don't know, but like have some people on standby and who know that you're doing something a bit more intense so that they can check in on you after and ask for help and receive help. Yeah. Okay, we are coming to a close and it's so tight. It's so tight. I wanted to ask one more question of the panelists. Go, go for mm, it. Go for it. Okay. How have your journeys changed you? And how have your journeys changing you changed how you come to life, to other people, to your work? Short and sweet. I can start. Uh, it has made me, um, it has made me uh, someone with more openness. Um, you know, I am more, I can tolerate more. Um, and I can love more freely. Um, and uh, and also important one thing that I think for my work that I have picked up, I have learned from my uh, travel is to really acknowledge the real knowledge holders. That I am not my work. I am my work because of these conversations, about because of these relationships, because of these experiences and to always acknowledge and give due credit to whoever has contributed that uh, in my journey. Yeah. Camilla Rose, go. <laughs> Yeah, for me, it was um, how it changed me is culture. Yeah, cultural survival is crucial and and also brought me to understanding cultural boundaries and borders within myself and also for me to trust my knowing and to not doubt my intuition. And 
to also step up in to step up in the world that I have around me and that I surround myself with because I am with it. Yeah. It lent me to to find myself with. Thank you. Well, moving or not moving, I think every single journey have uh, have me have gave me tools. Forgot, have gave me also like build me. I, I feel like that, not like changing me, but also like yeah, make me make me grow. It's it's life. It's my life. It's our life. So um, it gave me lots of perspectives of humanity. You know to to understand how hard can be the can be can can resonate even if we've been as bodies, um, yeah, from other very far far away places. So I think it's 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 more than than change me, build me as a human human soul, human part of this collective. If not, for example, ecoversities, I will never, never meet you all. So, uh, yeah, give me so much humanity and love. That's mm. what's what's the best. <laughs> so lovely. Salo, I would love to read our poem to close out, to just celebrate this moment together and this journey that we've been on. Um, I'd love to invite people to just like settle back and let the words flow over these echoes, these resonances. Um, oh, sorry, what am I trying to do? If you need any assist, let me know. Oh, great. Awesome. Um, are you seeing the pictures? Yes. yes, these mm -hmm. are pictures shared by Rose um, on her journey. And so I'm going to read the poem now. Um, are you hungry? Stagnation creeps in. I experience fears and doubts, pressure to be productive and win money, trauma, my routines, the constant questioning, paperwork, borders, stagnation. The call comes into me. I feel my feet burn. A gong goes off. I am ancestrally led. The human and the more than human indicate. I trust them as pointers of the path, trusting the deeper knowing. There's a path there. Let's go. There must be a way. This will open. Are you hungry? The beach, a flow of energy, solitude, the depth of soul and the waves of our mind. The way we are going is the way we are supposed to. There are people all around me. I am no longer secluding myself. I go searching for hope. A cycle journey, get up and walk, hitchhike, freedom. Are you hungry? In those spaces, an impulse moves us to restore our spirit. I am on the journey because I want to do it, to meet the new within and without, having fun with it, however the path is showing meeting others to realize that in that I am meeting myself. I acknowledge the real knowledge holders, sovereign steps steeped in liberation. Are you hungry? A push and pull between societies, hierarchies. When do I give in? When do I challenge? In the journey, we collect our fragmented pieces to become whole, rebuild myself, rewrite narratives, redefine borders. I find in other cultures a full encompassing experience of life as a whole. I claim my identity, my inner leader. Are you hungry? After all that, the road formed me. We arrived at the most beautiful place ever, even though it was not our original destination. Here we love more freely. We step up in the world. Thank you. Um. Wow. Now <laughs> stop sharing. That was a beautiful, beautiful polyphony, a beautiful journey. <laughs>
Thank you all so, so much. Thank you all to our panelists. Thank you all for being here, for your echoes, your resonances, your words, your feelings, your sentiments. Oh, may all your journeys be a blessing and may they, may they be so accompanied, so accompanied. Um, I want to name, I didn't name this at the beginning, but when we are journeying, we are always in conversation with the spirits of the lands that have called us. Um, and just to name that those spirits of the lands are also like they are weaving themselves into our stories, into our narratives, into our paths and through us into the world. So acknowledgement to them as well. Acknowledgement to all of you and to the journeys that you're on. May your path be blessed. Ashe.